This is me? No, that's not you, that's Cloyster. He was the father of the cat people. He lived years ago at the beginning. Who's that? That's him frozen in time. No, that's me. I was sent to stasis. That's what frozen in time is. We have arrested more rebels who have been spreading the teachings of the Holy One. It's a cat book. They don't use marks. They use smells. You run your nose along the line and all the different smells are released. It's really good. What a pathetic idea. <laughs> Bring these insurgents to me. Oh. Oh. One of the first songs I ever wrote. It was called Om. <laughs> Um... Here he comes now. You do the talking. Um. <gasps> Miss Jane. <laughs> what a mess you look. Cat descended from domestic house cats, and we found Crichton on this crash ship, the Nova 5. He was looking after three skeletons. Totally unhinged. <laughs> But now I'm on Red Dwarf, fitting right in. <laughs> you see, I try, sir. I'm not an insubordinate man by nature. I try and respect Rimmer and everything, but it's not easy because he's such a smeg head. <laughs> it's him, the holy puppadom. He has come back, as predicted by the Book of Smeg. Hey, hey, I've still got me plan, and I've still got a cat. OK, it's not Frankenstein, but it's still a cat. Did you say Frankenstein? Yeah, she was your great, 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 great grandmother or something. The Holy Mother? The Virgin Birth? <laughs> no one believes that stuff. The Virgin Birth? <laughs> no, it was a big black Tom on Titan. Frankenstein, yeah! I remember that stuff from kiddie school. The Holy Mother, saved by Cloyster the Stupid, who was frozen in time and who gave us of his life that we might live. No, it's not Cloyster. It's me, it's Lister. It's Lister the Stupid. <laughs> we are so blessed to have finally met our holy Papa Dom. Guys, guys, guys. Let's take this from the top. My name isn't Cloyster, it's Lister. David, 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 Lister, 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 Forget it. Whatever it is you're suggesting, forget it. But the entire ship is running on emergency battery power only. With the oxygen recycler and minimal heating and lighting, I estimate that Lister and the cat have approximately two months left. Without your drain on the power, they might last six. I'm sorry, sir. Sorry? Why are you sorry? Well, the Space Corps Directive 195 clearly states that in an emergency power situation, a hologrammatic crew member must lay down his life in order that the living crew members might survive. Yes, but Rimmer Directive 271 states just as clearly, no chance, you metal bastard. <laughs> Come on, man, you gotta sacrifice your life. I'm not asking you to do anything I wouldn't do. You? You'd sacrifice your life for the good of the crew? No, I'd sacrifice your life for the good of the crew. <laughs> I beg you to reconsider, sir. Human history is resplendent with examples of such sacrifice. Remember Captain Oates. I'm going out for a walk. I may be some time. <laughs> yes, but the thing is about Captain Oates. The thing you have to remember about Captain Oates. Captain Oates... Captain Oates was a prat. <laughs> if that had been me, I'd have stayed in the tent and whacked Scott over the head with a frozen husky. <laughs> and then eaten him. Two, wouldn't you? History, Lister, is written by the winners. How do we know that Oates went out for this legendary walk from the only surviving document, Scott's diary? And he's hardly likely to have written down February the 1st, bludgeoned Oates to death while he slept, then scoffed him along with the last packet of instant mash. <laughs> How's that going to look when he gets rescued, eh? 
No. Much better to say, Oates made the supreme sacrifice while you're dabbing up his gravy with the last piece of crusty bread. <laughs> You've got no magnificence in your soul, have you, Remy? Let's just say we can eliminate the switch-off option. Nothing to do now but just sit tight and wait for it to blow over. How long is that going to take? Could be days. I'm wondering if I'm doing the right thing. What do you mean? Hanging on. Draining Starbucks' battery. Maybe it would be better if I just pull my own plug and be done with it. But if you power down, you'd be dead. I'm already dead. I don't care what the damn scan says. We're the posse. Boys from the dwarf. Yeah. Remember, we're the posse. With the boys from the dwarf. That's me there. Those are my brothers, John, Frank, and Howard. God, we were close. The four musketeers we used to call ourselves. Well, the three musketeers, actually. They always let me be the Queen of Spain. <laughs> Marvelous. I mean, yes, I was the butt of the occasional practical joke, but I mean, uh, nothing sinister. <laughs> For like the four musketeers, D'Artagnan, Portos, Athos, and the other one. Remember, you're the other one. I'm the other one? Where's the cat? He won't be long. He's, you know, in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> And on the day you left, I vowed I'd never be called on cool again. And I've been cool ever since. Well, except the one time we landed on backwards roll and I needed... It's a long story. <laughs> Who shall returneth to lead us to Fushal, the promised land? No, it's not Fushal, it's Fiji. And I will. I'll lead you there. That's where we're going. Holly, plot a course for Fiji. Look out, eh? The slime's coming home! <laughs> hey, so where will you go now? Go? Well, now I bet you know Fuchsial, the promised land does not exist. The promised land is not a planet, brother. It's the place in your heart. It's a way of thinking. The promised land is right here. And as the scriptures predicted, we've been brought here by the God of our people. Thank you. Oh, thanks, guys, for introducing him to us. Oh my god, I can speak again. I'm a god. This is going to look so good on the old CV.